Hello and welcome to Wrestling and Everything Coast to Coast with your host, Buddy Satella Esquire and wrestling's premier photographer, Dr. Mike Leno. And Dr. Mike, would you like to introduce our guest for tonight? Our guest, Rock Riddle. Wrestler oh, par excellence. All okay. over the place. Movie star. Uh, school helping others. He just got back from WrestleCade. International entertainer. And, and of course, you know, legendary wrestler, my brother since like late 74, early 75, when he came into our L.A. territory, he was making his way from the East Coast, where he started like in the around the Charlotte, mid-Atlantic area, coming all the way up. And, and you guys seen him on Soupy Sales show taking on uh, White Fang and uh, it was a Black Fang, Black Tooth. No, it was White Fang because Black Tooth White was Fang. the baby face. And and also many times on the Gong Show, a zillion other things, Hollywood success. Rock Riddle, you just got back from uh, Mid Atlantic and Russell Cade. Uh, Russell Cade. Tell us Russell about Cade. the whole because I I'm, I I know of it. It's huge. It's an annual event. But who was there? And tell us all about it. Over two hundred major Over. superstars were there. I just want because I'm not hearing myself in my earpiece. I just want to make sure that you're hearing me okay. Yeah. No, you sound great. You sound great. Fantastic. Okay, I could just take these out then. It doesn't matter. But then I wouldn't hear you. Okay, WrestleCade. Last year, they had 8,000 people go through it. Uh, this year, over 200 major legends. It is one of the largest that I know of, possibly the largest uh, wrestle fan event ever. I did a couple of things because I really like the guy who who puts it together. I think he's great. I think he's very fair to everyone. He did a couple of little favors for me without me asking. So I said, I'm going to do a press release for you. And I'm going to release it. I'm going to pay for the publication and the distribution out of my own pocket as a way of saying thank you. I did that. It went to over 315,000 websites. It was published on 315,000 plus. I also called the hometown newspaper because I grew up in North Carolina. This was a this is a 45 minute drive from where I grew up from my home there. And I said, "How'd you like to do a story?" So they did a front page story the Tuesday before this thing happened. Front page and another page later on. Basically, it was almost like a commercial for WrestleCade and the fact that Rock Riddle is going to be there. So this year, now I can't say that it's simply because of that work that I did with the press release and the front page newspaper story. But this year, they set an all-time record, 2,000 people more than they had last year. So I had my little uh, booth there, and it was, it was just cool. I met some of the best people. Uh, of course, I know basically all of the professional wrestlers, so it's always good to meet them, to have that that chance to reunite with them, to to have this like amazing family reunion. But and I also met people who are not in the wrestling business, some fans and some people who have different smaller promotions. I met some really really nice people. So not only do I have these major legend friends, but now I have some new friends. And it was very much worthwhile. I made enough money selling pictures and posters and things and autographing them and doing all sorts of weirdness, like putting people to sleep in the middle of the aisle. And I paid for my airfare and my rental car had enough left over to have a decent dinner. So aren't you glad you asked? You ask, it's just like, oh my gosh, Nick Bockwinkle, you ask him what time it is. He tells you how to build a watch. Rock, let me ask you. Uh, no, that, that's you know, a good. That's a good line. Yes, that's true. Thank who you, who's you. the promoter, and how many years have they been doing this? Uh, Tracy Meyer, I think is his last name. It could be an S on the end, Myers. But uh, how many years? I don't know. I would say ten years. Okay. Uh, maybe that's maybe longer. But <laughs> I I think I discovered it eight or ten years ago. And then let us know, um, uh, just give us some of the names that were there. Who was, you know, because I, I, I hadn't looked it up yet. Uh, I've been a little swamped, but I know there were, you know, besides yourself, some first class people from our biz. And were there any non 
wrestlers, like actors there, say like Tanya Harding has been at some of these things because she's boxed and done I MMA? I don't think so. But all the way from my longtime friend, Jake the Snake Roberts. Oh, my uh, goodness. Uh, Rikishi. Let's see who was around me. Molly Holly. Uh, across from me, uh, Abdullah the Butcher. And uh, when when it was just when we, were, when we were wrapping up the day and most of the people had gone uh, from that particular room, Abdullah called me over and we talked for a while and he says, picture, get a picture. I said, so I, I got a picture with, no, no, we don't pay. So but we, we have respect right. for e each other and it's the fans who pay and, and I think they get a fantastic deal. But it was fun to talk to uh, Abdullah. Yeah, I think you guys uh, are, are able to undercut Hulk Hogan's $450 a picture deal, you know, that he wants. Does he get it? S sadly, yes, because he has to yeah, pay for no. his son's legal defense fund somehow. So, okay. yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, this I kid got into some. Okay. Do, do you want to hear? Next. Yeah. Do okay. you want to hear? Want to hear a Hulk Hogan story? Say yes or no. Yeah, because oh, yes, indeed. Yes, was, indeed. Absolutely. Uh, you were around. And Ed Leslie were going all over, like Mobile as the uh, Bolea brothers or the Boulder brothers back in the 70s. Well, you see, you can't. We can't talk about the 70s because my official birthday is July 12, 1973. So I see things that I wrestled before I was born. So, so you're five I, years younger than I am. You're five years at, younger than I am. At least, at least, and certainly look it too. I, I, in addition <laughs> to that, because we were not able to get this through my OBS studio and I've got the lighting and I had a green screen, I had everything. And now I look a little bit purplish, don't I? But incredibly handsome. People say- I like the Joker from Batman. Ah! No. I like that, but I would be the Riddler, of course. Okay, here's the uh, Hulk Hogan story. You know, Hulk, Hulk Hogan hates me, right? Oh, that. I didn't. that puts you on an ex a non-exclusive list. I think you're 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 on a list that looks similar to one that Santa Claus has. Okay, Hulk Hogan said, "I hate you, Rock Riddle. I hate you, your hair." And I said, "But Terry, I can't do it with the." So you can see, I don't think. I said, yeah, I saw it. But, the pony but, tail. But Terry, it's so hard to keep the hairs. The hair like this is the upkeep is keep is so expensive. You remember, don't you? <laughs> I told once that. upon a time, yes, maybe in the uh, early eighties he had some hair, but not you know once the you know uh, all his lifestyle kicked in. I think See, it wasn't capable. That's what makes it funny. And I told Jimmy Hart that I thought Jimmy was there when Hogan initially said it, but apparently not. And when I told Jimmy Hart, he said, he says, oh, he, he's just ribbing you. I said, no, listen to the whole story. And he says, oh, yeah, that sounds right. Jimmy Hart, mm -hmm. oh, what a, what a beautiful man he was there. Oh, uh, Johnny Fairplay was there. Uh, he's, oh, on the he's, he's on that, uh, I forget which channel, if it's CW or uh, Fox or something, the heels of reality shows. He's one oh. of the great heels because he loves wrestling, as you know. Oh, I know. And I think it's something has the name villain in the title, the great villains or something of that sort. But that's that's his latest endeavor. Many times when I go to North Carolina, because I have a home there also, and they're like 2% of the year, 1% of the year, something like that. Go out to visit my mom, who's 99 years old. Wow. And, uh, and costing me over $9,000 a month, but it's a great place. And I was just there visiting her and she knows who I am still. Uh, and I said, this place for a, an, an assisted living type of a place, there's a great, it feels really good. It feels tranquil and the, the fireplace and everything. I said, yeah, if I ever had to go into something, this would be a nice place to go. Anyway, there we are. So a lot maybe of for a little bit less than 9,000 a month though. Yeah. It's not, you know, it's scary what that's winding up costing everybody. But, you know, well, these days. 
Yes, uh, I'll tell you that uh, whenever I tell people that, my initial reason for telling them was, she, she's costing me over nine grand a month. We got to do something. She's going to outlive us all. And whenever I would tell them, and I turn, most everything is, is a joke or I see humor in everything. And when I tell them, a lot of people say, that's not a bad price. You could have sp spent a lot more. I said, yeah. wow, yeah. wow. So, and it just went up okay. again. Uh, I've never asked Rock if he's got brothers or sisters. All the decades I've known you, you have brothers and sisters. Maybe they could help, but I, I don't know if you have it. <laughs> My brother was an only child, <laughs> and, and so here's the deal with him. I, I have a book should be out in April, and all of this is in it. All the things that Rock Riddle would never tell you because he's such a private guy behind the Mister Wonderful. I w I don't want to say facade character um give me another word anyway persona 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 i didn't want to say facade no not no facade. persona persona oh persona yes sorry sorry yeah the rock riddle persona anyway what would be just oh so one time when i was little the, my parents said if you can't say anything nice to your brother don't say anything at all I did not speak to him for over 30 years. Mm -hmm. Wow. Where is he at now? Where is he at now? He's in, he's in North Carolina. Of course, he's very, very old. He's not young and handsome like me. This thing in North Carolina was uh, like uh, Jackie Crockett or... Um, uh, Jim Crockett. Who, David Crockett. Uh, I, uh, David the was, Yeah, David was, was there. David was there at WrestleCade. He was just behind me and uh, looks, he reminds me of his father. So I said, take this in a, a good way. I mean this as a compliment, but it's a little bit like looking at a better looking version of your dad, Jim. Mm. Now, where in uh, North Carolina are you? No, he's in, in Southern Cal. He just got back. That's where he was, though. No, I thought he said you were in North Carolina. That's where Russell Cave was. Oh, oh, oh. So. That's where he was born and, and raised. He ran a, a Rip Hawks fan club before he got into wrestling. And uh, I'm seeing a lot of people on. It looks like uh, Wendy Richter Rock was at this Russell Cave as well. And there yes. were lectures. It looked like there was like a whole schedule of events. So now I'm finally on the website, which I should have done earlier. Thank you. Uh, some were because Jimmy Hart wrote so much music. You know, as part of the Gentries in the 60s, but then in Memphis, and then obviously once he got up to WWF, he wrote just a multitude of stuff. And then at WCW, uh, there was lots of meets and greets, 40 years with the fran of the franchise. I'm assuming that Shane Douglas was there. Sounds like there were yes. a ton of people. Jeff Hardy in yeah. concert Saturday a week ago. Yeah, both Hardys Russ were there. Behind My Music with Jimmy Hart. That's why I, I brought that up. Yes, uh, that, was, that was very that was very, I'm sorry, that was very good. I sat in on it and uh, afterward I talked to Jimmy. He says, yeah, I saw you standing in the back. I said, well, you you don't have to point me out, but as long as you knew that I was there and I, I really liked it. I thought it was very, very well done. I think it was videotaped and hopefully we'll be able to see it somewhere online soon. I mean, he did an, an amazing amount of music uh, and vignettes, I think, and he was part of various booking committees at WCW. Did a lot of stuff that uh, George South did uh, uh, some worship. He, I guess he's a, a preacher or a minister, and he did that last Sunday, just a week ago today. Right. A lot of stuff going on. It, it, this really does look huge. And it, the, the fans dressed yeah. up in cosplay. There was a lot of stuff going on. There was there. Uh, I met several uh, young ladies who ha and a guy also, husband and wife and what have you, but really nice looking young ladies, the kind that uh, if they walk by the guy's jaws would drop like in a, in a James Bond movie at the at the swimming pool. You'll see that as the lady walks by, they'll be they'll. Head turners. And then they'll continue their sentence. Yeah, but I talked to them. They have some sort of uh, wrestling. It's not, it's sort of imitating 
uh, professional wrestling, but it's with the these young, um, gorgeous ladies. And they had a device that I had not seen before. You stand on a circular disc, I'm trying to see where I, am I? I wanna see myself, here's myself. Uh, you stand on a circular disc and there's a motorized camera that goes around. So you have four, I think four of their ladies, uh, very animated, animated. I just think they made up, made up a word, sleep deprivation. But then they put music to it and it goes back and forth. And they asked me if I wanted to do that as we were talking before we let the people in. And I said, if, if nobody comes up and, and wants to do it and you need someone to be first, go ahead and do it. But uh, they, they did good business. I thought that was really nice. And I thought afterward, kicked myself because I saw the end result with two other people. And I said, this is brilliant. Mm. So, yes, very, very nice event, uh, very worthwhile. And you have the opportunity, the fans out there who are watching, you have the opportunity to meet 200. It was actually over 200 professional wrestlers uh, and just about anybody you could name who is still alive. You could have gone there and seen them. Steamboat. Oh, my gosh. It, it, just start naming names. Um, and. Was JJ or JJ Dillon there with his uh, daughter Pam? No, he was not. The last time I talked to Pam, uh, she told me that he had a, a a minor but upcoming operation, and they were trying to do it sooner because it's somewhat painful for him to go around. Uh, it's an operation that many, many, many of us have had. Uh, and that's as far as uh, I think I should go into it. But yeah, I miss JJ. Um, and I did not see Pam. Sometimes, uh, especially during this time of him waiting for the operation uh, to take place. Hopefully it's uh, not a kidney stone operation. because It is not. It so is that's not. one I've had to deal with the last couple of weeks. I have a lot of friends that are oh. getting it this time of year. I don't know what the deal is. Well, maybe because we're not eating as well as we should. Maybe there's something in the diet that does this. Uh, who knows? But uh, anyway, a lot of times Pamela, his daughter, does come even without him. And uh, so she did not make this one. This is a long trip for a lot of people. However, as I said, uh, in fact, uh, Dr. Mike, if you were to go, if you're still on that website, click on guests and just look uh, at that amazing list of people. And that there were more people there than who was advertised. So people came in sort of toward the last minute also. That is really good. CAC, caulifloweralleyclub.org. Hint, hint. Take a look at that. Take a look at the gathering. I'll be doing the gathering next year for the first time. I'm doing one in, gosh, Missouri, St. Louis, I think. I'm not sure exactly where it is, but that's called... Fan Fest 2, and it's Southern Illinois Championship Wrestling. Uh, interesting uh, guy there. Actually, he's starting a Hall of Fame and uh, a museum. He's got tons of stuff. Uh, Herb Simmons, if I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yes. sort of uh, Larry Mattis that helped him out. There I see. Uh, yeah, he's been a guest on our show. Yeah, Excellent. And Slaughter Excellent. And, uh, Steamboat are there uh, at the, they, they gave, I guess, a talk. You know, it's probably a ton of folks uh, but, giving talks. Rock, this, this brings up an interesting uh, subject, because the last time I saw you in person was 2007, the Russell Fan Fest in San Francisco, when you were in the Battle Royale. And it's a favorite miniature subject of mine and on this show. Okay. You know, we, last time you were here, we didn't really get into that battle royal and everything that happened at the Russell Fan Fest. And and Mike took I, me there as his I, photographic I, assistant. I, so um, I, I got I to see you it all, in firsthand. Yeah. But I'd be fascinated yeah. to know what your take was of the 2007 Russell Fan Fest. And watch how fast I jumped in so Mike couldn't say something. Oh, okay, because I know he, he has some strong feelings still about that. Okay. The, <laughs> Okay. That that was very strange, very weird. For me, it was sad that some of the guys didn't get paid and so many people got cheated and what have you. However, 
Having said that, for me personally, I didn't get paid either. I was promised, but I didn't get it, never will, of course. But it was a great opportunity for a, a family reunion with my beautiful wrestling family. And I, I don't know what else I can tell you about that. Um, it, it's so wonderful. And I'll get back to the Battle Royal in just a moment. But it's so wonderful to want to meet people and then they know who you are. Because my opinion of myself it, it, in character, uh, it, of course, massive ego, but my opinion of myself outside of that wrestling persona is that I think I'm this good. Other people, Jerry Briscoe thinks I'm like this good. Pat Patterson said that he had some of the best matches of his career with me uh, and so, so much other. But anyway, at that particular event, I was in the dressing room and uh, Dr. Oh my gosh, wait, 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 Mitchell, Mitchell, Jim Mitchell. Yeah, um, Jim Mitchell, who does the scary uh, character, the heel yeah, the man. De demon. Yeah, he's uh, like the uh, like Anton LaVey. Right, right, right. But when I saw him there, I had a friend who said, uh, he's going to be there. Now, Jim Mitchell, but what's the other? Sinister Minister is his. The sinister uh, Minister. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So I saw him and I was going, my friend had said, you got to bring me a picture of him. So I was going to get a picture. And he said, Rock Riddle. He says, what an, what an honor to meet you. He said, uh, Man, we marked out for, about you. We'd see you on the covers of magazines and stuff. And and uh, I said, wow, wow. So I just, I don't expect that kind of thing. It's uh, similar to at CAC one time. Uh, CAC, when uh, Percy Pringle, uh, Paul Bearer. Bo uh, Bill Moody. Uh, Bill Moody, yeah. yeah. Uh, when he was there and he was, he, he was hot. He and Undertaker, of course, all over the world. It was the third day of the three-day event. The big banquet had just finished. I had, had gone there by myself. I was feeling you know, sad, and I, I was going to do that four-hour, four-and-a-half-hour drive back to Hollywood. The Hills of Hollywood, direct from the, his palatial estate. High in the Hills of Hollywood, we introduced, we, et cetera. Okay, but um, he was sitting there. Paul Bearer. He's sitting there in the room of the chair with a bunch with other chairs circled around him. So he's talking to a group of people. And this is basically af after half of the people have left. And as is traditional in our business, I said, well, I have not met this man yet. Um, I should go over and shake hands and introduce myself. And then the little voice, which has been killed forever now, this little nagging voice said, what are you, Riddle and Mark? Are you a fan? You want to go over and get an autograph? The guy's busy. He's being he's seen in 130 some different countries. He's a major star in this business. He has no idea who you are. Just get up and leave. So I gave in to the little voice, and I'm walking toward one of the exits. As I do, I, I look over toward him. And there's something interesting when someone is looking at you. Even if it's behind you, you have this feeling and you turn around. He turned and looked at me and he stood up from his chair and he did this, like parting the people. And he says, sir, Rock, Rock Riddle, sir, it's such, and he put his, how do, <laughs> I'm trying to get in frame. He, he put his hand out. He says, sir, it's such an honor to meet you. And I figured, okay, this is some sort of a, an elaborate rib. And the boys are going to come out from behind the, the columns and, and, and laugh. But it, no. was, it was real. And he could see on my face that I, I did not understand. He says, Rock, Pensacola, Mobile, all over the territory. I sat front row. I watched you. I've got pictures of you and Bobby Shane. I've got so many stuff. And I'll get that to you. He says, you paved the road. For me and for so many people. And I said, wow. Well, we became friends, and I have a picture that I never would have probably found otherwise uh, of my friend.
Bobby Shane. I all, it's very strange. People, I was talking to uh, uh, Jerry Lawler a few days ago. Jerry was there too. By the way, I, I won't share everything that he told me, but I, I think this would be fine. He looked good. He maybe a tiny bit tired, but I think we all were. He just had and the stroke a couple of months ago, major stroke. Before you, it seems like it was only a few months ago. It has been nine months. Yeah. And he told me, I said, how are you? How, how's everything going? He says, they told me it would be a one year recovery. It's been nine months. I said, okay, so in three months, you're going to be a hundred percent. He says, yep. I said, I have an idea. Stop. I cannot tell you what I told him until he gives and, and what we may have planned, but uh, that's as far as I can go. And I also talked to so many of my friends, Chavito was there, Chavo. Um, I still call him Chavito because I watched him grow up and, uh, Chavo said, Brock, I'm very expensive. I, I don't work. I, I, I get big money for what I do. I never work for free. Rock Riddle, I would wrestle you for free. And I said, oh, where's my tape recorder? Mm. So, you know, uh, he uh, choreographed that entire, all the wrestling scenes for Iron Claw, the Von Erich family movie that's opening up, I think, the 21st of this month, or if not sooner, which is yeah. hilarious because Meltzer panned it months ago, and now everybody's lauding it as this, and you see the footage, and it looks exactly like the three Freebirds against Carrie, Kevin, and David, Wow. Uh, magnificent. I can't wait to see it. It's, I understand it's incredibly good. Obviously, there were some very good people who put, had input there um, from our business. And I have the feeling also it's going to be great to watch it. And it's also going to be sad because. Yeah, well, how can you not There's tell one. the Von Eric story and have it be a tragedy? It's got to be a tragedy, unfortunately. But, uh, yeah. Mike, is, Mike Von Eric or Mike Atkinson is not in it. They do have Chris, but not Mike. You know, the, it's not like Dark Side, where they're having to cover yeah. every little bit. But I got to go in there and shoot quite a bit in the '70s, and then got to shoot at Keel when they came in for Munchnik. They were so over because yep. of their Ed's TV when Carrie, Kevin, and David came into Keel. But let's go back. I want to go back to Florida because I forgot about that. You know, Bobby Shane, just a couple of months before he passed, before that accident, he came into L.A. before, just before you got there. And it was a stopover. And he worked at a KCOP, like against either Tolis or Black Gordman or Furpo, because he was heel. He was in his full, the king of wrestling, Bobby Shane. And then at Wednesday TV at the Olympic, he worked one of the greatest matches I'd ever seen against Carpentier. Real clash of styles. And he was only there to put over, you know, he was just there as a stopover before going over to Baba's All Japan. But man, there was a guy who Eddie Graham was going to put the bond on either him or Buddy Colt. And uh, this was for, you know, the whole NWA thing. Bobby Shane would have been, uh, and he was ultra super superstar atlanta hawaii st louis kind of where he started as a baby face as you know was, those were your days too but yeah. yeah when he got into that whole thing uh you know when i you don't even know i put on this st louis i'll try to be brief with it because evan ginsburg came down and, and helped me in the weeks leading up to it but i spent a whole year putting the sam muchnick tribute weekend together and all of bobby shane's surviving family came as did pat o'connor you know his widow julie and all of the kids from both marriages but it was especially big to have uh, i think it was just his father because his uh, wife i forget what her name was that was sherry hey yeah she had passed after and i think she was never the same after he died I, my understanding, and again, third hand information, when Bobby, Bobby Shane and Miss Sherry had sort of split up and she never let go. <laughs> when he was killed and we know who was flying the aircraft as a pilot, I can give you information there also. But uh, when Bobby Shane, when the aircraft went down and Bobby Shane was trapped and he could not 
get out and tried to tried to rip his his legs off with his hands so he could get out, but he drowned. Uh, after that, I heard that Miss Sherry killed herself. Is do you have any information like yeah, that? that? Have you heard that? That's what I heard too. She was devastated. Yeah. Even yeah. They had a kind of a you know towards the end volatile, but she was beautiful, great valet. But yep. what an incredible you know that Florida territory when you got there even before that you know since the 60s but when eddie graham the genius took it over uh quality athletes i mean that was a hotbed i, I really think the greatest i mean mid-atlantic was happening basically uh after you know because it had been a, a a tag team territory for so long uh hawk and hansen george and yes. Scott, all of the greats but you know, it's a weird story. Johnny Valentine was promised the book by Mike LaBelle. And he came in and he advertised he was going to have a match with Tolis, who he'd been friends with since the 50s. And uh, then he goes off to do just three spots for Inoki's New Japan. This, this is, uh, oh God, was it 73 or something? No, it was a little bit later. It was 74. And uh, he gets the phone call from Mike LaBelle while he's over that he's decided not to give him the book and John, Johnny told him to F himself. And then he gets a call from the Scott brothers to come and book there. And he came in and, and mid Atlantic was a great territory, but when he came in, I forget how long he booked. He didn't want any light shown. He started focusing on younger guys and more singles matches. And I mean, everybody, all of his friends, Buddy Rogers came in to help get Flair over, get that figure four going. Because originally when Flair came in, he was billed as Rip Hawk's cousin or nephew. And, well, uh, you know, came in straight from Ganya's. I mean, because that's basically the only place Flair had worked. He was jobbing on TV to great stars like Chris Taylor and all the rest of them, pretty much everybody. Uh, and, and Cosro did some similar stuff. But when Flair got there and, and then Steamboat and uh, Johnny Valentine got Brunzel to come in and Bobo and... Patera and John Studd. I mean, that that was kick-ass. And so those are my three, three favorites. Mid-Atlantic, Florida, which is uh, everybody wanted to work for Eddie Graham, and then St. Louis, the prestige factor. I'm just talking U.S. Uh, what about San Francisco? What about Roy Shire? That was big, too. You know, my home base. I love my home base, but I I would go to St. Louis Keel and my eyes would pop out because the opening matches would be like main events in L.A., you know, seeing Bobo and Dick the Bruiser tagging in an opening match at Keel, it didn't get any better than that for somebody like me. And then up on top, Dory Jr. Hour Broadway with Harley Race. Dory's boot comes off halfway through the match, and he didn't want to spend the time. I don't know if it was part of an angle or whatever, but he didn't put it back on, and he wrestles just one booted. That was what was on top. Rocky Johnson was underneath from our San Francisco territory. San Francisco was neat because... A lot of people don't realize this, but all of the guys that really came in and helped Vince McMahon Sr.'s territory, the Tri-WF, and became WWF Click, Pat brought in Rocky Johnson, Morocco, Ray Stevens, he threw Ray, you know, one of his last bones, Peter Mavia, uh, all of these guys, uh, Snuka, that was because Pat initially, you know, Vince Jr., he got along so well, and uh, then he would tell what Bruno called the old man, Vince Sr., let's bring in, in these guys. All these San Francisco Territory legends came in and, I mean... We forgot our pal Woody Farmer. No, not, not Woody. He wasn't even part of that period. Rock was there, and he saw all those guys. Pepper Gomez, again, Peter Mavia and Rocky Johnson. Pat, once Rocky, uh, excuse me, once Pat uh, turned face after the feud with Billy Graham, you weren't quite there yet. Billy Graham was wrestling his, uh, his nickname was the spirit of America. You know, he'd come back, he came in, Jerry Graham brings him to LA. They do a couple of shows in 1970s, early 71. And then Michael or Jules Strombo decided to send him. Rock, what are, what are some of your memories of when you worked in San Francisco? I made money. Roy Shire liked me. I remember doing at least one, um, main event at the Cal Palace, and I'm sure I did more than that. I, we never, most of the wrestlers, we never paid much attention during those years as to who our opponents were. Generally, I had no idea who I was going to be wrestling until I was told at the night of the event. 
and I had someone, and I, and obviously thousands of people and so many different matches. Uh, I had someone ask me a couple of years ago, they said, did you ever wrestle Jimmy Superfly Snuka? And I said, gee, I, I wrestled so many hundreds and hundreds, and we didn't really pay that much attention. It was something we loved, but we, I don't know that some of us may have kept record books, but with someone with that big of a name, I think if I had wrestled him, I would have remembered. So if I have to give you a yes or no, I would say no. Three weeks later at my Hollywood office, I had a little delivery. It was a DVD. It was Rock Riddle versus Jimmy Superfly Snuka in the Cow Palace in San Francisco. So I, I oh, wrestled. Where do, you, where do you find footage of that? That's, you know, not not it, a lot of that got still preserved after all this time. I think Joe it, Souza was the guy that sent you that tape, was it? It's possible. It was 16 millimeter, maybe even eight millimeter. No audio, uh, right? There's no audio. I think you're correct there. And I said, oh, okay. I vaguely remember this now. I remember this guy with this big splash off the top. I guess that was that was him. I, I will tell you this, that my, my feeling has always been, if I work for you, I want to make you wealthy. I want to, I want to do whatever you want to have done. As a wrestler, most wrestlers see about this much. As the promoter, the promoter can see what's happening now, six months from now, a year from now, if they're really good, maybe even two years out. So when a promoter would say, Rock, like for you to, uh, here's what we have in mind for you. If it sounds like something stupid, it's like, I don't know, maybe I'm going to jump over the top rope going in and fall and trip and be counted out in four seconds. Three count within four seconds. Bell, bell rings as I fall in. I would not question if that's what the promoter wants the promoter is paying me and i might in some situation like that said okay if you have time i i know that you know so much and i know like this is there some is there what was what's your reasoning where do you think this is going or is it going anywhere or this simply and then i was i would find out oh it's, it's part of a program this is what's coming next makes total perfect sense what, when Roy Shire gave me a great amount of flexibility and when he would want something done, I said, fine, you know, pin me, pay me. And uh, he <laughs> invited me out to his ranch in Sebastopol, California. That was something that he did not do to very, very many people. And uh, so I think it was someone on a major level. I said, yeah, I was out at uh, Roy's ranch. And that person said, I've been drawing money for him on top here for like eight months and he's never invited me. I said, well, I don't, I can't tell you, but that was a wonderful learning experience. Uh, even when I moved from San Francisco area, actually Hayward East Bay, when I moved there down to, uh, to it's Hollywood. interesting that Hayward, that you're from Hayward because all pro wrestling where I got started was right off Winton Boulevard. And there's a lot, it's just, it's interesting that Hayward, yep. sort of that epicenter. Alexander, yeah, Rock, that was Roland Alexander's school, but also Rocky Johnson and Otta lived there in Hayward, and that's where a young Dwayne Johnson lived. Hayward, you know, five minutes from me and Alameda. It's an interesting little epicenter of wrestling in the Bay Area, it's right there in Hayward. When I, I found Hayward on my own when I was looking for a place to live, rented an apartment there, uh, called uh, Roy, I think, to give him the address. And he said, you're where? I said, Hayward. He says, you got to move. Too many boys, too many of the boys are in Hayward. <laughs> I said, oh, okay. Uh, let's, let me make sure I can get out of this, uh, this short term lease anyway. And he says, no, go ahead and stay there. Just don't tell anybody. <laughs> Okay, and his sense of humor got him in trouble, got people hot at him. But it was always, from my point of view, everything, all, all that I saw was a sense of humor, an extreme sense of humor. So anyway, that's that's all I can tell you. The cow Oh, when I moved back down to uh, Hollywood, Roy kept calling me in. 
he kept flying me up. He would fly me to Vegas. He would fly me to Reno. He would fly me up just to do, uh, or sometimes I would drive up, but uh, go up just to do television for him. And I think, I'll, I think he appreciated my work ethic. And also he just, we had that camaraderie that he wanted to make sure that I was taken care of, I guess. So I, don't know, I he will always like you a lot. Very quickly, Dorothy Hopkins, who was the one who made the ring outfits for Pat and Ray and Pepper Gomez, Pepper Martin, et cetera, the, the fringy ones, all of the great. Yeah. yeah. That's the one that Roy allowed to film with her little eight millimeter camera. So that would be her footage of you versus Snuka. Also, um, Roy co hosted a bunch of my TV shows. I'm going to, uh, Russ hasn't even seen these, Evan's seen them, but. Uh, for a number of years after Annie Calvello, who was the moolah of roller derby, was my co-host for about six years, Roy would come down from Sebastopol all the time. Sometimes he brought Dorothy or one of the kids. But um, in terms of Pat being the genius, Pat Patterson, I always remind folks, well, he learned at the tree, the learning tree of Shire, Vern Gagne, Eddie Graham briefly, and some others, as did Bill Watts. So the genius bookers, Bill Watts spent a lot of time working for Roy Shire in the 60s. They learn from other geniuses, and, and you see, you, particularly with Pat, you know, creating the Royal Rumble and being Vince's number two guy. Uh, we were real proud of that, being San Francisco strong and, and what impact our territory. You know, it was a great territory. L.A. was great, you know, for a number of years, but you couldn't top Roy's Battle Royals, where the second to the last one, he had the current NWA world champion and five former ones and Bruiser Brody all in that battle royale because like with LA, the boys coming and going to Japan, they would agree to come in and do the shot for Roy. And man, the names were, you know, his very last show, Ernie Ladd against Ron Starr was the opener and the very end because his, uh, or actually the battle royal was the opener, but the very end match because the guy that won the battle royal, he'd have him face whoever was a NWA champ. Pat's only NWA uh, singles match for the title it was it was against Harley, but that was an amazing match too because you know Pat just didn't get that opportunity because you know primarily it was in uh, Vern Gagne's territory and then Roy's and Tri WF. He didn't do well, other than Florida. That was like the only end of big territory really uh, was in. You know, after his years breaking in, like in Amarillo and folk places like that. And then for Don Owen, we know all those stories of Pepper Martin and was the one who got him into San Francisco, and the rest was history there. Yeah, but man, all those years with Ray Stevens, amazing, brilliant stuff. Dr. Mike, I have a question for you. You are like an encyclopedia, and I know that you could go for a week. If you did, with, if you could stay awake, you, it would just be really fascinating. And you if I didn't cut of him this. off, if, if I didn't cut him off every once well, in a while, he off. would go for a week. Yeah, let Rock finish. Okay, here's my question. I, at the height of my career, had top billing over, this is a true-false, had top billing over the heavyweight championship of the world, Jack Briscoe, heavyweight wrestling champion, versus Ken Mantell, junior heavyweight wrestling champion, for the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world. And I was above that, had top billing. True or false? I'm going to say true, but first tell me what where, where did that occur? Was that for Leroy McGurk in Lake Oklahoma? No. Where was that? Oh, my. I think that was Mobile, Alabama. Okay. I Mobile was, was run by the Fields family. Yes. Yep. So I'm going to say true. Yeah, it's true. So, I, and here's the Can thing. You know, Go ahead. Gene Booker, besides being an amazing wrestler. Okay. I did not hear the first part of that. Say it again, please. I said Kenny Mantell was a genius booker. Yeah. For Watts, yeah. for Fritz, for Mike LaBelle. He did two tours for Mike LaBelle. Uh, but he came in a lot as NWA uh, junior champion, working oddly with uh, pork chop Bobby Cash, who you knew. He was still there when you got in in 75 and, uh, you know, many others. Manny, so two years old. I was two years <laughs> old in 75. Man, that's my most impressive feat, wrestling at the age of two. Uh, Ken Mantell brought me into Texas a lot in, in the 80s after I had sort of semi gotten out of the business. That 
oh, many, many great stories. Okay, uh, here's the thing. In Mobile for that match, long distance between the dressing rooms. One's on like the east side of the building and the other's on the west side of the building. And the only person of whom I'm aware who went back and forth was the referee. So the referee was in my dressing room and I said, are you going to go over to the other side? He said, yeah. I said, would you do me a favor? Would you give this to Jack Briscoe? He says, yeah. I said, okay, let me, let me autograph it first. It was a picture of me and it said, to one of my biggest fans, little Jackie Briscoe, hang in there, kid. You'll make it. Work hard. Someday you'll make it, and you'll be main event just like me. Signed, your hero, Rock, Mr. Wonderful Riddle. And I told that story to Jerry Briscoe. And uh, I asked him, I said, did you ever see that picture on the wall, Because on his wall? Because I was told by someone years later that they had just visited when Jack was still with us, obviously, and that they saw that, that he had that picture up on the wall, whether it's true or not, I really want to believe it. And that's just one of the high points of my, my career. I think being able to tell stories like that, Andre, the giant stories and iron Sheik, the first time I met him, all of the different things. So uh, what, what would you like to know? My I want to ask you though, cause Evan will kill me if I don't ask you, because I know we've emailed about John Tolis. You held the America's Tag Team Championship with John. But we're doing the book on John and Chris Tolis, who were total legends. And they came in. I didn't even know. They came into Florida. They came in into uh, mid-Atlantic in the, six, the early 60s, late 50s. They had two tours, uh, to my knowledge, of uh, mid-Atlantic in the Carolinas, uh, working with uh, the great Bolo and... Uh, and Gene Anderson was just a rookie when they, uh, you know, it was his first year working when they were on a card. But what do you recall about John? At least do you recall him other than Los Angeles before you got there? Um, no, I, I knew him. I don't believe I met him before Los Angeles territory. I remember he was a, a very nice guy, very kind, a good sense of humor. And of course, how do you spell wrestling? No, T-O-L-O-S. That's the title of the book. How do you spell wrestling? Oh, oh, fantastic. Fantastic. I, I really don't have a lot to tell you about yeah, him. He's, he's right. someone... He go insane on his promos because uh, in 73, you couldn't get away with that now. He did this thing where he had just turned back heel. And what an amazing baby face. Nobody, there isn't footage him from 72 wrestling. It's... Uh, defending the title against all the heels we had, Ernie Ladd, Billy Graham, Killer Kowalski, and the Sheik, Ed Farhat, the greatest, that's a pretty good crew yep. uh, there. Kenji Shibuya, he had matches with, but he, uh, the promos, Did you've got to recall <laughs> some of those promos because he would really turn it, crank it way up when he was delivering. Yes, he was one of the great promo men, uh, uh, or stick men sometimes you called it. The microphone, the stick, stick man. I see he's one of the very, very finest uh, that the business ever knew, I think. So, yeah, I certainly had admiration for him from from the wrestling, from his wrestling in the ring to his promos, uh, to his sense of humor, to his camaraderie with many of the most of us. And uh, he would keep us sometimes entertained in the in the dressing room, as you might imagine. Uh, I know, uh, Mike, that you and I were at his funeral, and uh, I, I, I'm surprised at some of the major stars when they when they pass, when they have the their oh celebration of life. I'm amazed that there's not a thousand people who are there uh, who attend. Yeah, when I was at, uh, and I switch over. I, and I'll have about a thousand people at my funeral, but they're all going to be people that I owe money to. Yeah. That's a way to get them to come. <laughs> and, and they're not going to be lined up at your grave. Oh, I'm going to be. I'm going to be. I, I was asked to be buried in the ocean. I just for that yeah. reason. I don't want them <laughs> selling my my body parts for money after I go. Yeah. Uh, I was at uh, Terry Funk's funeral also. And uh, that was amazing. I talked to 
Oh, get it in a moment. Um, I, I, I'm resisting going there in my head because it, it, it's sad, but uh, give me a major guy who's still working from ECW. Oh, Tommy Dreamer. Thank you. Tommy was sitting next to me and w the, this auditorium, I think seats like the church auditorium, amazing thing. And I think it seats the, the, like 1,700 people. And there were, I'm thinking, less than 200 people. And I told Tommy, I said, he says, well, Terry booked it. He, he filled it. He filled that section. I said, yeah, but there should be, there should be hundreds and hundreds. There should be a thousand of us here. I mean, at least hundreds and hundreds more than we're, than we're here. But the people who were there certainly appreciated uh, those who went out of their way to, to attend. I remember Dusty Rhodes' funeral, and there were 700 of his closest friends there in Tampa. And Atta sitting in front of me, and I just looked around. And I got to tell, share this, tell you, 700 of the most impressive who's who of professional wrestling that who were alive at that point. And... You can't, I don't think you can name anyone who was not there, but uh, any, any major name. But as I was there, I looked around and I said, this is my family. It was just such a, a wonderful feeling. Um, and so many friends. You know. Anyway, just thought I, I would share that. talked about that on the show, too, about how wrestling is such a weird family dynamic. I mean, <laughs> three quarters of the time you want to strangle these people or, you know, hit them upside the head, you know, when you're you're on the road and you're forced together and you're forced to, you know, perform under such weird circumstances. Sometimes you got a thousand people in the audience. Sometimes you got, you know, more wrestlers in the back than there are people in the crowd. Rock, Rock doesn't know, Russ, you were a heel manager in uh, APW and your own promotion and stuff. When you say 700 folks, though, a lot of people from the biz, that was at uh, Dusty's, right? That was at Dusty's funeral. And then like a year and a half later, I was at uh, Roddy Piper's funeral. Still hard to imagine he's gone. Thank you. Didn't you come it, to the, um, our thing? I, you were there at the thing at the... Uh, the memorial. The at, at, or on Sunset Boulevard, yeah. Yeah, the comedy store. But I was also at his actual funeral. Um, yeah, we went up in Hillsborough, right? Hillsborough, in, Oregon. Yeah, about an hour's drive from Portland. And uh, Roddy's funeral, I, I'm, I'm sorry, Rod, Roddy Piper's death hit me harder than my own father's death. That's, yeah. Yeah. That was the weirdest thing. A lot of us thing. aren't over it yet. I just saw they live with my no. daughter. You know, it's, uh, it's, it, it, it's, 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 and he would be such a contributor to the wrestling scene now if he were still alive. You know, he would be such a he, he was giving a lot of great talks and and a lot. You know, I managed to meet him a couple of times and he was always very congenial to me. And and yeah, I, I definitely think it's hard to to know he's gone. I have one last question. We're running out of time, but I really wanted to, to ask this of you when you were on the show. And that sure. is, you know, 2007 here in the Bay Area was the last. Russell Fan Fest we really had that was of a large capacity. And well, it was the first, only luckily because they uh, went across state lines, uh, the Kramer right. husband. It was such a huge bomb that, you know, it scared anyone from trying to do it ever again on a large scale here in the Bay Area. Do you think there'll ever be, you know, um, another type? Of, and you said you're connected with all these other Fan Fests. You know, um, do you think that Northern California could ever do another big fan fest? We also lost someone that really organized a lot of these things in Kirk White uh, last year. So, you know, it's weird to know, you know, it's since 2007, it's been a real uh, uh, empty space out here. And I wonder if we could get something like that ever started back in the Bay Area again. I'll give you two answers. The first answer that came to my mind is absolutely, of course, then taking a look at the at san francisco and how it has devolved and the word is worldwide that you, no one wants to go to the san francisco area uh, whatever you have will be stolen uh, and also you're going to be dealing with needles and 
fecal material and all sorts of horrible stuff. Everything that we don't want in our lives that we keep backing away from, which is why over a million people so far have recently have uh, left the state of California. But San Francisco has such a horrible reputation. Uh, could, it, could it be done there? Yeah, it would need a lot of, of promotion. And I would say find something. Do it in Sacramento. Close yeah, enough. Sacramento is a possibility. Um, yeah. Santa Clara is a possibility. The, the, you know? the problem was there were two ripoff promotions that occurred prior to the Cow Palace thing in 2007. And Meltzer was calling me several times a day from my hotel room to report what was going on yeah. with thing because it was well attended, but a lot of the boys didn't get paid. The promoter mm -hmm. who did his first thing. Anyway, they absconded with the, uh, the cash box meant for the yeah. MMA res uh, athletes and the pro mm -hmm. wrestlers. Uh, so that was the last one because we made such a stink and reported on all of it and gave out all the names. I was the one, as you know, that had to go to the daily city, the South San Francisco and the Brisbane police departments to file the police reports with another pal of mine, the late Scott uh, Goldstein. Uh, so because that was it, it clean, it seemingly maybe Meltzer's reporting on it, et cetera, cleaned up stuff because now we have all, all I've heard of for the most part are ethical big conventions, high spots, Russell Cade, the prior ones that were in uh, uh, Charlotte, you know, for many years, I forget the guy's name who put them on great ones. Greg Parler, Greg, somebody. Lake or park or something like that. Yeah, he put them on. They were very good. It, it finds, uh, everything has been ethical around the country and in, yeah. in Canada since 2007, as far as I know, maybe some dinky ones. But the major big ones like this attempted to be, I don't know why you would go to the Cow Palace for something like that, uh, because major companies like TriStar Autographs, you know, they lost money and finally stopped going to the Cow Palace. But uh, Rock, let me have you plug and promote anything you'd like to before we let you go. Of course, you're going to be a major part of our Tolis book, and you know, we'll be. Wow. Uh, but but, but go, you, your book is coming out in April. I, I've got to get on my uh, ass and, and get you more photos. Uh, for when you're ready to promote your book, you can come back on the show too. We'd love to have you back. Again Absolutely. Tomorrow. Thank but you. Go ahead and tell our fans that. how they can get a hold of you. Uh, take a look at the website. It's uh, rockriddle.info, rockriddle.info. And are you still doing Hollywood success, helping other actors and folks from other genres get into acting and et cetera, entertainment? Yes, it's been very slow over the last three years, but I have begun doing seminars again. Um, and one of the seminars I do uh, for actors, I think, is very necessary, and I'll plug that. Uh, we'll be doing some more of those uh, early next year, um, and that is called Firearms in Film and Television. Over 60% of film and television shows involve the use of firearms. Actors have no idea what they're doing. They don't know how to hold a firearm. Alec they have Baldwin. no idea. <laughs> Yeah, you do, let's sort of skip over that. Can we say negligent homicide? Oh my gosh, did I let it slip out? Um, Spoiler alert, no, they've been talking about it quite a bit about charging it. I, for that, I, so. I, I know that's that's the uh, I believe was the appropriate talking to all of my law enforcement friends and what have you. But I teach or we teach actors, we bring them into a theater, we use no weapons, we have a training. Uh, gun, if you will, that only shoots a red low powered laser, but we have it connect interconnected with computers so they can hear the sh shot and they can see how fast they shoot and what have you. But we'll teach them how to utilize that firearm properly so that when people, and little kids and others watch them on television and emulate what they see, they don't end up doing harm to someone. Uh, so that's that's something that I think is is very very necessary. No, we kept waiting around for someone else to do it. No one ever did. And then several years back, we decided we will do it ourselves. Make them look very good. I think if someone is going to be on on television or in a feature film and play the violin, go out and take a few lessons because people can. You're going like this. We know that you don't know what you're doing. 
And with firearms, um, keep your finger off the trigger. Oh gosh, here's I'm an I'm a CIA guy, and right over here is my partner, and I have the the gun pointed at his head. We're like. <laughs> It, it, no, it's, there's it's, so much it's, it's that's you're, you're right about that um what's the name of your book coming up simply wonderful nice mm -hmm. that's great mr wonderful of, of wrestling uh rock i'll be in touch can't thank you enough and the uh, rock has done so My much pleasure. decades and decades and decades i think since the late 70s early 80s helping other actors forget about so. the birthday stuff rock has helped people and uh yeah, everybody in the biz loves them. Yes, so. and we really love having you on the show. And um, we're, we're Bobby too. I don't know if she's there, but say hi to Bobby for me. Yeah, we're just about <laughs> out of time, but we'll have you on the show again when your book is ready to be uh, published. And love to help you promote that. Very good. And I have two subheadings for the book, and I'll get a, a census, a a some feedback from all of your listeners as to which one I should use. Shall I say it now, or do, or do that the next time? No, say it now. Simply wonderful, the choice, suicide, serial killer, or legend. Mm, or what's the other S choice? Second, uh, simply wonderful, from darkness to legend. I like that one. Yeah. So I like, you don't have the word suicide in your title, which I'm not sure if that's a great seller or not. I've gotten pretty much 50-50%. At Russell Cade, I'm asking everybody, which is the reason. I said, come over here. Need an opinion. If you were interested in a book, would this push you away or would it make you interested, more interested? Oh, I liked it. That suicide thing. That make that's fantastic. I want to read that. And I'm a school teacher. So I said, okay. Um, and the other one is me pinning. I have a picture of me pinning. I can't say because people will figure it out. I'm gonna use it. Here's me pinning a major superstar, WWE and many other promotions. His head is turned away from me. I said, look at the ties in the trunks, red, white, and blue. Okay, look, there's some white writing, uh, lettering on the back of the tights or the trunks. You tell me who it is. I will personally autograph the photo, give it to you free. Awesome. Hey, it's great to have you on the show. Thank um, you. We'll have you on again very soon. And a happy holidays to you. Send me money, PayPal. <laughs> very Rock good. Rock at HollywoodSuccess.com. Send me lots of money. Nice talking with you. Thank you very much. I'll see you again soon. Good night, everybody. Stay good, good night. night. Stay rock.